In this lecture, you'll learn how BGP is used for layer 3 MPLS VPNs. So we covered these in an earlier section. You actually saw this slide before. You can see that we've got the provider network going from the PE to the left to the PE on the right, and we've got our core P routers in the middle there. And our customer edge CE routers are going to connect to the PEs. And because the provider is providing a layer 3 MPLS VPN here, our different customer sites are going to be able to communicate with each other. So customer A at the top, all of their sites can talk to each other. And customer B down at the bottom, all of their sites can talk to each other as well. MPLS runs across the provider's core on the PE and P routers, the customer CE routers do not run MPLS. So looking at the diagram again, we've got MPLS configured on the two PEs and the P routers is configured on the provider devices. The CE routers do not have MPLS enabled. They're not MPLS aware at all. The customer CE routers peer at layer three with the provider PE routers. So they see the provider router and they are going to exchange routes with the provider router as well. They can either use static routes or a routing protocol. And the PE router looks just like another customer router to the customer. The provider's core routers are transparent to the customer. It can't see them. And the customer sites are in different IP subnets. If we look at customer A, they've got 10.0.0.0 slash 24 up in the top left. 10.0.1.0 in their site over up in the top right. Okay, so that's everything that we covered already. Actually, you saw configuring the static routes and the CEs earlier as well. So here on CE1, we configure our IP route 10.0.1.0 pointing to the site in the top right. The subnet mask is a slash 24. The next hop address is PE1 at 192.168.0.1. And on CE2, we've got IP route 10.0.0.0 pointing to the site on the left, slash 24 again. And the next hop address is 192.168.1.1 on PE2. So when we do that, I'll just go back a slide. The, we've got our static routes on the CEs pointing to the PEs. We're going to need to have static routes on the PEs pointing to the CEs as well. So we're getting into the service provider part of the configuration. You didn't see this when we configured MPLS Layer 3 VPNs before. So on PE1, we've got IP route for 10.0.0.0 slash 24 pointing at 192.168.0.1 router CE1. And on PE2, we've got IP route 10.0.1.0, 255.255.255.0, pointing at CE2 at 192.168.1.2. So at that point, CE1 knows to send traffic to PE1 when it's trying to get over to CE2. And CE2 knows to send traffic to PE2 when it wants to send traffic over to CE1. PE1 knows how to get to CE1 and PE2 knows how to get to CE2, but we don't have end-to-end -end connectivity yet because PE2 does not know that it needs to go via PE1 to get to CE1. And PE1 does not know that it needs to go via PE2 to get to CE2. So PE1 and PE2 need to share the static routes that you see on the slide now with each other to get the end-to-end -end connectivity. So we need a way for them to share those routes with each other. There's not, they're not typically physically connected to each other, the two PEs. There's usually going to be P core routers in between them. So a routing protocol was required to share these routes, which is scalable enough to support many customer routes and also supports neighbors which are not physically adjacent, which are not layer two adjacent, so that sounds a lot like BGP, right? And yes, that's what is going to be used, BGP. So BGP is used internally between the two PE routers to share the customer routes with each other. So you can see that PE1 tells PE2, customer A can get to 10.0.0.0 slash 24 via me, that's the customer site on the left. And PE2 tells PE1 that customer A can get to 10.0.1.0 slash 24 via me, that is the site on the right. So we use BGP to share the customer routes between the two PE routers. 
that gives us full end-to-end -end connectivity. The P routers that the provider actually don't know anything about the customer routes. It's only the PE routers. Again, this makes it a more scalable solution. Now, technically, static routes or any routing protocol can be used between the PE and the CE routers. You can use static, you can use RIP, you can use EIGRP, OSPF, etc. But service providers will often give customers the choice of only static or EBGP to keep things simple and lower their support overhead. They don't want to have to support all of those different routing protocols. So they just say static, which is simple, or they say eBGP, which is simple again as well, because providers know BGP very well, and they're already using BGP between the two PE routers. So in that case, for configuring the CEs, you saw the configuration for static routing in this lecture earlier, for eBGP, our configuration would be looking at CE1 first. We say router BGP 65010, where we're using 65010 for the provider AS. Now, for this, this is all private IP addresses we're using here. We're not doing internet routing. So the customer doesn't actually need to buy an AS from the internet authorities. They can use a private AS number. The ASs that begin with 65 are private ASs. That's why I've been using them in the example. So they can use neighbor 192.168.0.1 and the remote AS 65.001 at the provider now. They're using AS 65.010, which is a private BGP AS, doesn't need to be registered. And they also need to advertise their internal network in BGP. So if you say network 10.0.0.0, mask 255.255.255.0. So at this point, CE1 will form a BGP relationship with PE1. The provider will configure the PE1 side. And then CE1, using eBGP, will advertise its internal, net its internal networks over to PE1. PE1 will carry them in iBGP over to PE2. And we're also going to need to have eBGP set up between PE2 and CE2. So our configuration for that on CE2, we've got router BGP 65010. It's the same config as we had on, on CE1, basically. Neighbor 192.168.1.1, remote AS 65001. That's the eBGP relationship with PE2. And network 10.0.1.0, mask 255, 255, 255, to advertise that to PE2 using BGP. Okay, so that's how MPLS Layer 3 VPNs work. Usually it's going to be either static routes or eBGP running from the CE to the PE routers. When you do the CCNA exam, you don't need to know how things are working internally in the service provider or how to configure it. I've been showing you that so you can see how it works end to end so you really understand the whole solution. But for the CCNA exam, you just need to know it from the customer point of view. So you need to know, understand, and be able to configure BGP for the customer for internet routing if they're connected to two different service providers. You also need to know how to configure it for MPLS Layer 3 VPNs as well, as you saw here, very simple. Again, it's eBGP, so our verification commands will be the same as usual. We'll have show IP BGP summary to check that the neighbor has come up, show IP BGP to check that routes are being received via BGP, and show IP route to check that they're making it into the routing table. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400 page CCNA lab guide which you can see above my head right now. Also check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.